Welcome to this webinar focusing on the preparation of the new academic year. Unfortunately, still a year with the COVID pandemic being there on the background. In this webinar, I will explain to you how we are organizing the program and take our measures. And with me at this webinar are Robert Orkello, one of the current students. And the camera is now going to, to see him. And on the other side of me is Marianne van Dieren from the admission office. And they will introduce themselves later on. My name is uh, Wieke Blau and I'm a policy advisor at ISS. I will start with a short presentation about the structure of the program. And then I move on to the practicalities. And throughout the presentation, I will pay attention to the COVID implications for the program. Um, we have a, a chat function uh, available, so please do ask your questions in the chat and we try to answer as many of those questions as possible during this webinar. So let me start with the, the ISS student body. We are expecting around 130 students in our two master programs that are starting this year in September. Um, the previous batch of students uh, will still be around until December and it provides very nice opportunity for the new incoming students to, to get introduced to the ISS, to the, to the Netherlands, to The Hague, to know the best shops where to go and the best bars as well, I suppose. Um, so it's nice that we always have the, this, this uh, overlap of two groups of students at the beginning of the program. Uh, from the map you will see that we have students from all over the world. So we have a very diverse intercultural experience with the students here. Also because there's a, a, a great variety in the background of our students. The average age of our students is uh, 28 at the moment, I think. And we have students who are government officials working in the ministry, uh, people working at local, local governments. Uh, we have uh, students who are working at NGOs or community-based organizations or UN organizations. Uh, we have uh, students who are coming from a university who are working as a teacher or as a research as a, at a research institute and we also have fresh graduates here at the ISS. So this is a very wide variety of background of students and that makes it also very interesting for students to, to learn from the, the teaching staff but also to learn from each other. So if we're looking at the pandemic at the moment, it will be very interesting to have debates and discussion about the impact of the pandemic. And then it's interesting to know, to, to get insights from people working at the government or working at a community-based organization, or what's the situation at various universities and what's the difference between various regions of the world. So we, we value the, this input and this learning from each other and through tutorials and small groups, we really like to, to stimulate that and, and to emphasize that. Um, so uh, the, this, the student body, this applies to two groups of students that we have at the ISS. The largest group is a group of students in the MA in Development Studies, that's over 100 students uh, we are expecting and the uh, Mundus Map, the Master in Public Policy, we are expecting around 20 students in that program. And I will now give a brief introduction to, to these two programs, but before going there, I would like to uh, pay a bit more attention to the COVID-19 implications. Um, so we, we are still facing this situation with the virus everywhere around the world, coming in waves and under, being under control or not under control. So we are in this worldwide together and we don't know how the situation will develop. We don't know how the situation will be here in the Netherlands, but also not in your own home countries. Last year, students started entirely online and we hoped at that time that we would be able to move to teaching in class in January. And unfortunately, that was not possible in the Netherlands. But since May, it is possible to, ha to have some lectures face-to-face uh, -face and to have small group work uh, in the ISS building again. At the moment, the vaccination program is at full speed in the Netherlands and everyone who wants uh, to get a vaccination, it's not obligatory, can make an appointment and get their vaccination. So now, the situation now is that over 40% of the Dutch uh, adult population uh, is fully vaccinated and about 75% got, uh, got at least the, the first vaccination. 
Um, so we, we, are, we are preparing for the new academic year and the Dutch Organization for Higher Education asked all the universities to prepare on the one hand for the situation where we can go more or less back to normal with teaching all taking place in the building, but also to prepare for the situation that this is not possible, that we have to move to some sort of hybrid teaching, teaching in small groups and have a combination of online and in group work. So we are preparing for all of this and we hope to learn uh, mid-August more. Uh, we hope to have more clarity on the situation in the Netherlands and how we have to move forward. But we're preparing for all uh, possible uh, scenarios uh, we can think of. So now I would like to give an introduction to our MA in development studies. So the MA starts with the introduction week starting on the uh, 30th of August. Most students will arrive uh, the last weekend or the week before uh, the start of the program. And in the introduction week, you will meet the fellow students, of course, the teaching staff will arrange all the practicalities. And of course, we have an introduction program to, to The Hague. We start uh, uh, in September with the introduction week of one and a half week, that will be. And part of the introduction week, we know already, will be an online uh, introduction to our electronic learning environment, Canvas, uh, and the student and great registration system, OSIRIS. Also, the introduction to the foundation courses uh, that you have to take in the first term will be uh, done online. But on the other hand, there will also be introductory workshops on intercultural communication and getting to know each other, and those will take place at the ISS as far as possible. So term one starts in the introduction week also with diagnostic tests and remedials. So those tests are obligatory for all students and we're, it's, well, you are accepted to the program. So this is really a, a test to define weaknesses for yourself, maybe in English or in academic writing. And we offer remedials to, to, to catch up and to get it at sufficient level. So in September, we start with foundation courses in economics, in sociology and in political science. And those foundation courses are offered at intermediate and advanced level. So depending on, 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 your, uh, on your knowledge and background, you can either take the intermediate or the advanced course. And we have this counseling to, to, to make the right choice for you. Also in September, we start with a general course on development studies, and that course is obligatory for all students. And students will mingle and mix uh, across all the five or six majors that we have on offer. So this is really an opportunity to understand the field of development studies, to get to know the other students, and there's a lot of attention for uh, tutorials and, and group discussion in this general course. Well, the foundation courses, they last till October and then in November, we start with the core courses per major. So then you really get the introduction to your own uh, major program. Um, also in November, the counseling starts for the, the courses you will take in term two and term three. So term two and term three offer um, major courses, but also optional courses. And you will take research methodology courses in term two and three. And that can be either quantitative or qualitative research method courses. So to, to define which courses you should take, we start already uh, before the Christmas break with the orientation on the thesis or the research paper. So a first thinking of where do you want to focus your research paper on and what type of research methodology courses you will need for that paper. Um, then in, in, in term four, you do the research paper and it starts in May with a research paper design seminar. And then after the summer break in September, you will have your final research paper seminar. And then, of course, the deadline in November to submit your research paper. And then, uh, well, that's still one and a half year away from here. But then we hope that you will be graduating next year in December. I would advise you to check the academic calendar on the website. At the moment, we still have the current academic calendar there. The new one will be up uploaded uh, the coming month. And there's a lot of information in the academic calendar. Information on the specific courses, on the structure of the program. So I would really advise you to, 
open it and to go through it and to get a better impression of, of the way you, your master program will, will be structured here in ISS. <clears throat> so this was about the MA in development studies and now I would like to move just shortly, briefly to our master program in public policy. This is a two-year joint master degree in public policy which we offer with a consortium consisting of the Central European University that's based in Vienna, uh, the ISS for the first year. In the second year, students go to either eBay in Barcelona in Spain or they go to the University of York in the UK. So it's a two-year program and the first year students are starting uh, at ISS. Uh, in the first term, they have their own uh, Mundus MAP specific courses, but in term two and three, they will take, they will choose from the same set of courses as the students in the MA in development studies. It's a small group of students, of around 20 students, uh, but they are really part of the ISS community and they, uh, uh, but they are also part of the Mundus MAP community together with the students at CU. So they are a bit in, in two different uh, groups. So if you would like to have more information on the Mundus MAP program, I would advise you to check the program guide on the mundusmap.org website. So this was a really very short introduction to the programs. I can imagine there's a lot of questions coming up. But let me now move to the practicalities and also prepare the preparation of your stay given the COVID-19 measures. So like I said, vaccination is ongoing at the moment in the Netherlands. Uh, it's not uh, obligatory to get your vaccination. It's therefore also not obligatory to have your to be vaccinated before you can enter the, the, the country, the Netherlands. Uh, but you will have to, to show a negative test result and you will have to go compulsory in quarantine when you're coming to the Netherlands, as the situation is right now. But I suppose that will be the same. Um, rest assured, we've set up a wonderful system with the lady from the Butterfly Bar who is preparing breakfast and lunches and handing over every day with a big smile a bag with the breakfast and lunch for every day for to the students in quarantine. So we will take care of you. Um, I have to see where I am. Well, I explained already the current situation in the Netherlands. We were all doing well, but the, 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 the situation is not that well at the moment, also given the, this new uh, uh, type of the virus, the Delta variant. Uh, so this, the, um, the, the Dutch government is still closely monitoring the situation, and it's difficult to say what the situation will be in September. So we have an FAQ on our website and also on our website we provide a link to the page of the Dutch National Institute for Public Health. So I would advise you to check there for the latest update because it keeps changing the whole time. Um, very, very concrete when you're coming to the Netherlands uh, you will have to wear face mask in, in public transport and in station and in the airport. As, as it stands now, you don't have to wear a face mask on the street or in the in the shops. It's not obligatory, but of course some people are still doing it. Um, so the Netherlands is opening up a bit at the moment, uh, but we don't know what will happen the, the coming period. I would also advise you to check uh, the website on the latest update. Uh, but still, at the moment, it's possible to visit the ISS building, to visit the ISS library, to have interaction with staff and students. And uh, maybe uh, Robert can later on elaborate a bit further on, on life in student hostels and how everything is organized uh, there. Um, so, the preparation of your stay. Um, the admission office, Marianne and Els and Amina, her two colleagues, are working very hard to prepare the new academic year. Marianne will a bit later say, uh, give you an update on the status, on the situation with the visa application procedure. And rest assured that we do everything to, get, to arrange the visa as soon as countries are opening up and to deal with all the problems that you might be uh, encountering. Uh, in, your own, in your own country. Uh, in the Netherlands, you are obliged to have an insurance and the admission office will ask you for a proof of your insurance. And if it's not uh, full covering, they'll arrange an assurance for you. 
Of course, you will also have to prepare your trip to The Hague. Uh, for some of you, ICE is, is arranging the flights. Uh, others have to do it themselves. And please inform us of your flight details, your flight number and your time of arrival. We have a wonderful pickup service system uh, at the ISS, um, where the current group of students is going to the airport to pick up the new batch of students. You will receive all information about the procedure. And if for whatever reason there is no one there to pick you up, there will be clear guidelines on how to take, it, to take the direct train to, to The Hague and to come to the ISS. Uh, so you're really facing a uh, very exciting and international experience and um, we are really happy to help you with starting this whole new journey that you are about to, to, uh, to, to, to take. So I would also advise you to check the website, our website, there are many videos there and suggestions and links to go to. Also the website of NAFIC and of the municipality of The Hague provide valuable information for international students. And there's a Facebook group for prospective students. Most of you will have joined that Facebook group already. And this is an excellent way to ask all the questions you have, all the practical questions about how to obtain a bike and what type of clothes to bring and where to find the right shops. And you will see that there are also quite a lot of the current students in the Facebook group for prospective students, so they can also help you out. There's a WhatsApp group of the new incoming students. It's also a nice opportunity to check with each other whether there's someone else coming, arriving with the same plane maybe, or arriving at the same day. So you can link to each other and connect and go out on your first day, uh, go out on the streets and for, more, for a short walk uh, on the first day that you're arriving in the, in the Netherlands. So let me now say a bit about housing at ISS. There is a, a hostel just around the corner of the ISS at walking distance. Uh, there's spacious room where you have your private bathrooms and a shared kitchen. And those of you who confirmed they're coming to the, to the Hague have received already a link to subscribe to housing via the ISS. And in this link, you can, could also uh, indicate your preference. And as far as possible, we'll take that into account. So there's housing arranged via the ISS, but there are also alternatives. And some students at ISS choose to not to stay in the ISS uh, hostel, but to find something else on the private market. Uh, so we provide some links on our website, but I'm sure that in the Facebook group you can also find suggestion. But I would like to uh, make you alert to the fact that you have to check the prices and they are normally only uh, indicating the rent of the room. So there will be additional costs like uh, water, electricity and Wi-Fi that you have to take into account. Also in the Dutch um, uh, situation, normally you rent a room which is not furnished. So you have to be aware of that as well. And, and, and of course, in, in these times, we can't guarantee that houses on the private market are corona-proof. So that's something for you to be alert on uh, yourself. But I must say there are quite some students who go out on the private market and, and find a room. So um, if you would be interested, um, check the website and, and the Facebook group uh, for prospective students. So now I get to the very last part of the of the presentation, which is about the student life. And actually, I think this, this introduction should be given by Robert and not by me. So I will hand the floor over to him uh, right after uh, I ask Marianne to, to introduce herself and to give us a, an update on, on the communication and context that you have with the, with the prospective students. Oh, and may I remind you, please ask your questions in the chat and we will deal with that after the introduction from, Mar uh, from Marianne and Robert. Yes, uh, my name is Marianne. I work in the admission office with Els and with Amina. So all of you have come, come through us, really. Um, we first arrange your applications and admission. And after that, we move to all the all the practicalities of the time between admission and arriving at the ISS. Um, starting with the financial arrangements um, for people with a scholarship, we um, 
we administrate the scholarship program like the OKP, the student, the dry linden. Um, for the self-financing students, we uh, are in contact with all of you uh, explaining the, the cost procedure, what you have to transfer. We send invoices. And once you have made the payments to the ISS, we start your visa procedure. Um, we only start it, um, and then our colleagues of the international office, they take over. Now, they do all the communication with you, but they are in contact with all the Erasmus students. So if you have specific questions on your visa procedure, then please let us know, because we can also uh, ask them what's going on with your visa application. Um, so that is, has been what we've, what we've been doing now. We've been concentrating on starting your visa applications as soon as possible, um, because um, the idea is that all students are in the Netherlands at the start of the program. And because the visa takes a long time, both here in the Netherlands and at the embassy, um, we wanted to do that quickly so that hopefully all your visas are ready in time. Um, what then? Um, when you have arrived in the Netherlands, you need to do uh, various things like opening a bank account, register in the municipality. Um, we will be sending you information on all this, how this works and what we do to help you. We make a group appointment for all of you to register at the municipality during introduction. Um, we send you detailed instructions on opening a bank account. Um, because opening a bank account takes a while, um, we first help with um, paying the self-financing students a cash allowance upon arrival so that you have money to live on. Also, the, the scholarship holders will get this money. And um, the rent for the first months, until you have your own bank account, will be settled by the ISS. So you don't have to worry about transferring money from abroad. That um, ISS will take care of that. Um, that's mainly what we do. We are a bit behind in sending you all this information, but we hope to send it either later this week or early next week. So that's basically what we do. Okay, thank you, Mayal. I suppose there will be many questions and please ask them in, in the chat environment. And now I would like to give the floor to, to Robert and maybe you tell first where you're coming from and what study program you're doing and then your experience uh, in the program so far. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Robert Okello. Um, I'm from Uganda. Um, I'm doing social justice perspective, um, human rights, gender, and conflict studies. And I'm also the SJP representative. Um, I welcome all of you and first congratulate you upon uh, making it to this amazing institution, ISS. Um, we hope to see all of you um, at ISS when you when you report to uh, school. Um, I I must say um, last year in, in September when I travelled from Uganda, um, it was at the peak of the pandemic when we first uh, Uganda registered the first case and we went through a stringent lockdown and the airport was also closed. I suppose that's the situation in some of the countries right now. Um, but my government was able to um, give me a pass to travel to school um, because I wanted to come here um, to start off already building the connection or integrating myself into the study space. Um, so I landed in um, um, I landed, my, I actually reached Belgium uh, because it was quite hard to get flight to come over to uh, to Europe because most of the airports were closed. But so I had to use repatriation uh, flight 
which took me to Belgium. Then from Belgium, I picked a train to um, to Den Haag. And I suppose some of you may go through that situation, the process of of your coming. But it's it's gonna be fine if you if you've made the decision to to come. Um, I think it's 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 gonna be just fine because there are people who are waiting to welcome you and to receive you. Um, for our case, it was um, at the peak of the pandemic, so picking from the airport really was not the best option, um, as we are also coming from different countries, and here uh, the cases were also higher at that time. But um, we had um, someone from the old batch who welcomed us and gave us our keys and, and gave us some, some goodies which are waiting for us here. So um, I suppose if you're going to land in, in Skifo, um, uh, at that particular time you're going to land, um, I urge you to read your emails or send emails to the administration uh, office because um, there's a lot of emails that usually come in in the beginning. And um, I, what I can just urge you, my fellow colleagues, is that read your emails. Any email that they send, you don't pass it. Make sure you read it and you know exactly what that email is saying. Otherwise, um, because there are other emails that will come and all those emails are giving you steps of your integration in the Netherlands. And um, in the beginning phase, there are a number of things that you have to um, register, like bank accounts, um, like BSN, the number of things that you need to register. So, and those emails have those informations. Um, so I would really, really ask you to, to keep those emails at your fingertips. And um, I think for, for your coming um, as the old batch, um, as it was mentioned, there will be a preparation to pick you from the airport. Um, yeah, as I, I'm quite sure scholars and, and the admin will plan something around that. But nevertheless, if there is also no picking because of the situation, I think you can still make it to Den Haag. It's quite easy. The transport system can look very complicated, I can't say, but um, even at the airport itself, there are people who can help. Um, there are people where I think either blue or you can just go to their stalls and, and ask them what to do exactly. And the trains are usually down in the, in the airport and the platform, I think either five or six, it brings you straight to Den Haag Central. And from Den Haag Central, um, you'll be able to find a bus to come to uh, Dora or Bazalan or where you plan on staying. So um, I urge you to also to follow the social media or join WhatsApp groups because that also helped me. Um, groups created by uh, students to uh, kind of start building that network among yourselves and start sharing information. I'm sure there is one right now that students are asking questions on. Um, those are the groups that uh, uh, you will really, really help you to integrate in this place because there's a lot of information sharing at that time. And I also um, know in the beginning um, there are, of course, some courses, as, as it was mentioned here, uh, you're hearing about remedial tests, diagnostic tests, but don't freak out, it's gonna be just fine. Um, I can tell you, if you've been selected uh, to join this institution, you, you are ready to you pass those tests, trust me. Um, it's the same feeling that I had um, before coming. I'm like, I've not even prepared myself and I'm going for a test, I, I can imagine. And some of you have been out of education and like you're super worried already. But the tests are designed um, to kind of just bring you back to the academic fields and test different areas of, of your learning um, and also to just uh, prepare your mind for the courses which are coming. And trust me, you're going to pass them. Uh, quarantine life, um, we had to uh, quarantine for 10 days in our uh, student housing, uh, but uh, of course we had a lot of support 
um, we were delivered food, as it was mentioned, from Sandy. Every morning, uh, she brought us uh, food, which catered for uh, breakfast and lunch. But also, um, here you have a lot of applications where you can just order food online and um, they make deliveries for you. And also, um, the welfare office is very supportive uh, of us when we're here. Um, they often communicate uh, with, with the students and also their available resources. Like I know for scholarship students, I says there's some amount that you're given when you come. But also if you're going through some challenges, you can always communicate to the welfare office and um, they find a way of, of, of helping you. Um, we do have our mentors, which were also very important for me in the beginning. Um, when I arrived immediately, I started communicating with my mentor and um, she helped me in a lot of things that I wanted. Uh, within the 15 months, I couldn't go and buy a 15, at the 10 days quarantine, I couldn't go out and buy certain things, but my mentor was helping me with uh, some of those things. So, and we were also having group meetings already uh, because you share a mentor with two or three fellow students. And within that group already, you start building some rapport and some friendship along. Um, the housing, I, for those who are coming, joining the Baza, Lan, or Doris, um, it's, it's, it's an amazing place. I can, I can tell you, it says, for me, I, I stay in Bazalan, and um, I can say if if you're coming, if you're moving to another country, and the reason why you chose ISS um, is to build new connection, meet new friends, uh, widen your space into different countries. Um, life in this housing, you're going to meet new friends. Um, there's so many things that you do. Like right now, I'm in the we have a sports group where we run every day. We have a group where we do things, we travel around and stuff like that. So, um, and also within the housing, we have a common room, um, which during this pandemic, we didn't use it that much. But right now when things are opening up a bit, we have started to have some events. Um, there are some games in the common room where you can play if you're bored. Um, so yeah. For those coming to stay within the student housing, it's it's just fine. You will, you're going to enjoy it. It's pretty accessible to ISS. Just two minutes or one minute walk. Um, the library is close by, so yeah. If you're in the student housing, it's 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 quite important. Um, and also discussion groups. So if you live in the student housing, you're able to do that. Um, yeah, and like I said, you build friendship around. And, and stuff like that. So, yeah, we'll, I hope to have all of you here and answer your question if you have any question in relation to what we are talking about here. Yeah? Thank you for your elaboration. I think this is really interesting for the prospective students to hear your personal experiences. And uh, so, thank you for that. And and uh, well, if there are any questions specific for you. Um, I will sure uh, Darren will ask them. So Darren, do you have any questions for us? A lot. <laughs> so we have a lot of questions. I'm going to go through them and I'm going to chunk them up if they are related to one another. Um, no. We have not mentioned so much about part-time program structure. Now, will there be any changes to the structure? a part-time program because of the pandemic or is it going to be how it is stated in the website um i i, I would advise the, uh, uh, people who want to do this program as a part-time program to contact uh, via the admission office uh, admission office or me with with more specific questions because normally there are only a handful of people are doing it in a part-time setup and in the part-time setup it means that you are taking the classes with the regular students, but you're discussing with the convener what exactly which uh, courses you're taking the first year and which, which courses you're taking the second year. But I think this is a rather specific question and better tailor-made to, to, to the situation of this person. Thank you, Vika. 
I think this is a question for Mariana uh, because you were talking a little bit about insurance. Right. So can you please elaborate about the insurance uh, and what does it cover if students unfortunately get the corona? How, how does it work? Where do yeah. they go? I mean, yeah. Yeah. We um, basically we take out an AOM insurance. It's a student insurance that we've been using for many years. Um, basically, we take it out for all the students and they have also paid for it or it's part of your scholarship. Unless you let us know that you all ha already have an insurance with worldwide coverage. But that's only for a few students who live in Germany or Italy. So basically, you will get the, the package called Complete Plus. The Mundus Mop students get a slightly different package. They uh, get a complete package. Um, we will take it out for you. The, we will start the insurance for you um, over the coming weeks. Um, and it's important for us to know when you will be arriving in the Netherlands because we start the insurance like a couple of days before your flight so that you are insured while you travel. Um, it's, um, we will send you the, the link to the website of the Aeon so that you can look up exactly what it covers. It covers all medical costs. And when you get sick from Corona, it's it is included, the costs are included. Um, things like dental costs are not covered, basically. So you, you have to read carefully if you um, think of going to a dentist or having something done, because um, those are costs not covered. Um, usually you, you get a, a certificate, an Aon certificate by email after we have taken out the insurance for you. Um, if you go to the doctor, um, I think Robert can probably tell us how that works with claiming the... Have you ever claimed something from Have you ever claimed some medical costs? <laughs> Not <laughs> here. So right, <laughs> yeah. You, sometimes you have to pay yourself and then you can get the money back from the insurance and then you claim it online on the Aon website. But um, there will be... Um, Aeon is organizing webinars for the incoming students where you can ask questions and where the, the Aeon insurance is explained. So we will be sending you the details on when those webinars will take place. Thank you. Maybe we can elaborate a bit further on the COVID specific situation that um, if you will get your vaccination in the Netherlands, it's for free. Um, also, uh, if you have symptoms of corona, so coughing or not feeling well, uh, you are strongly, very strongly advised to be tested. And those tests are also for free at the uh, general uh, health services in the Netherlands. So uh, the costs for corona, if, we hope, of course, that no one will get it, but all those costs are covered either by the national authorities or by the health insurance. Thank you, Vika and Mariana. Oh, well, yeah. Um, one thing might be important to mention: the new Aeon package, Complete Plus, also covers illnesses that you already have or conditions that you already have at home. So, for some students who are using medications for asthma or something, it's important to know that this is also covered in the Aeon. This is new from a few years ago. Thank you, Mariana. Still another question to you. Actually, this is like a few students are asking the same thing about the first month rent. Right. Um, now, this, does it only apply to students living in the rooms of ISS? That means Basalan and Doris? Also That's... in the Gondelstraat. Okay, so it, they will also be paid. Uh, yeah, ISS will cover the rent and they, it will be deducted from the money either from your scholarship or from the money you have transferred to ISS, the, the cost of living. So ISS deducts it and once you have opened a bank account, this may take a while, then ISS transfers the, the rest of the money 
to your bank account or starts paying your scholarship into the account. And from then on, you have to pay the rent yourself. But it might be good to mention that people who are uh, higher uh, renting on the private market is not no, it's not, not paid by the yeah. Because that was the next follow-up question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Mariana, for that. Uh, there's so many questions. I'm going to go quickly. Um, uh, okay, so some students would like to arrive earlier to beat the, the length of self-quarantining. Is this possible? That means they want to come because it starts like 31st or 30th August, so they're thinking to come on the 20th. So they have 10 days to bid, and then they can come and see and build their network with uh, their fellow colleagues who's going to start as well. So is that possible to do? Uh, well, maybe maybe first is uh, uh, they change the rules on, on quarantine. Uh, you have to go in quarantine for, four, for five days. Then you have to take a test. If the test is negative, you can go out of quarantine. So, in general, people would be in quarantine only for, for five days or maybe six days. So, I think that's important to mention. And whether someone can come uh, earlier, um, I would advise you to contact the housing at iss.nl address because some rooms are available earlier uh, before, uh, indeed, as of the 20th, or uh, a bit earlier than the normal rent procedure, but that depends on the housing that you that you got okay but talking about housing things this is a common question about housing allowances uh, that students ask uh, like you can get like a subsidy yeah there, there is indeed an, a dutch arrangement that you can get as a dutch citizen you can get a housing subsidy but this housing subsidy is not available for uh, students or students from abroad i should say so um and, and the, the procedure in the Netherlands is, is such that sometimes the, these allowances are paid to the students, but then afterwards the government is recollecting this money and they can be very, very firm on recollecting this money. So, um, and, and we know for sure that you are not eligible for a housing subsidy in the Netherlands. So please don't go that road. Thank you, because that's a lot of questions about that. Um, now, uh, if students are quarantined for 10 days, uh, how are they going to get uh, groceries? If they have to buy a router, if they have to do things to get connected to, with their family and also feed themselves, should there is not enough food for them? How do they go around that? Well, maybe I should Robert? say first, uh, yeah, maybe <laughs> Robert should answer this question out of own experience. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, like I said, uh, for example, if you live in the student housing, um, it's uh, quite easy for you. The first day you're going to arrive, um, you'll obviously come to ISS reception and pick some packages that have been uh, prepared for you. And in those packages, it has some groceries, it has certain things that uh, can keep you within that time. Um, you're going to live in a student housing and like I said, if you create a, a WhatsApp group, um, it will be easier for you to communicate these things. But also, um, there's a lot of uh, old batch students that are selling off things. Um, but also uh, on Facebook, uh, for example, I bought my router from one of the old batch students. Um, so when people, when you are arriving, um, there are also some old batch students who are letting off uh, their things. So I can uh, I can say that it, it's quite easy to get some of these things um, within the student community. You can just ask if you ask what you need, and um, yeah, you can you can get some of those things. And also there are people available to help you buy some of these things your closest neighbor or your closest friend, there are people who would have finished their quarantine already, so they can help you pick up some of these things if you need them. Also, and how about router? How did you manage to get your router and how did your fellow colleagues, like, is there a way or 
or several ways to get it maybe you can explain it a bit more about yeah that. so like for me when i reach i i came uh two days when uh, I, I found someone on my floor already and uh the person was so nice to give me their wi-fi password yeah mm -hmm. for the first at least most of us who came um you come when at least there's someone in your floor and that person will offer you the wi-fi password and you will use that uh, connection for the first second or but other students prefer already to get their own wi-fi so if you come you'll get a connection um, you just have to ask um, and, and of course if they pick you do we already know you are wrong and you'll be uh, internet you'll be able to get it yeah yeah very good because that's very important for students to know that they can also get the wi-fi password from their fellow uh, same level uh, yeah. floor uh, colleagues as well. And of course, there's also Wi-Fi in the ISS building, huh? Oh, yeah. So if they have problems. No, but if they're quarantined. Oh yeah. That's then they true. cannot travel yeah. to ISS. So yeah. especially for the first ten days. Thank you, uh, Robert, for that uh, information. Uh, we have to go really quickly. Because it's not just him. Um, okay. Uh, if classes were to happen in person, which most likely and hopefully will be, will the classes still be online for people who have to be quarantined if they come late or unfortunately ill or still in their country due to restrictions to fly to the Netherlands? So will there be uh, blended learning? Yes, of course, this is very difficult to predict and it's uh all depends on the situation and uh, we are quite flexible at ISS in, in this sense and uh, so we have to look how many people are online um, but we are aware of the situation and indeed it might be because you can't leave your country or there are no flights available or um, um, you are still in quarantine or you have symptoms or a cold and you have to stay at home so we are aware of this situation and uh, a lot of uh, courses are also uh, online available because they have been online last year, so the information is there available. And it depends a bit on the situation. If you would miss out just one lesson, it might be that the teacher asks you to, to liaise with another student and, and to, to pass on the information. But if it's a substantial group or a substantial structural uh, problem, then, then we move back to, to online teaching. Or an, an opportunity, for example, is that the, the, the lecture is uh, online available as well, and that there are tutorial groups uh, for students who can uh, enter the ISS building. There are groups in the ISS building, and for students who cannot enter the building, either because they are in quarantine or they're still in their own country, they form their own tutorial group of as an online group so there are various modalities how we can uh, deal with this thank you and Vika, sorry uh, and how many times a week classes do you expect to have uh... <laughs> yeah that's again a difficult question in the ideal situation <laughs> you will have for the general course you have uh, one lecture a week of, of two hours and uh, a tutorial session per week and you have for the foundation courses you have two sessions per week so and it's free foundation courses or there's three times two of the six uh, sessions per week but most likely it will be a kind of intermediate form that part of the courses will take place uh, at ISS and part of the courses will be online and that's well it's still open we hope to do as many uh, of the sessions as possible um, in the ISS building and and if it's on well it, so it will be blended so that means physical classes as well as online classes is there will be camera and recording so students who cannot come can also have participate. well in our experience it doesn't work very well if you have some students sitting in the classroom with the teacher and some students who have to follow the discussion uh, online or via uh, uh, a teams or a zoom session so what we then prefer to do is to have a fully online uh, lecture and have the small discussion groups either in very small groups because that's a maximum size allowed or to have a mixture of groups uh, uh, in the building or online groups thank you 
Uh, I think this has to go to Mikael, has to go, but maybe Mariana is a better person to answer this. Um, how does, for European students, how do they have, do they have to quarantine, number one, depending where they're from, I assume, right? Yes, depending uh, where they're from. And how do they register in the municipality? Do they follow the same way other students? And how do they open the bank account? Also the same way with other students? Yes, they can also use their European bank account. They don't have to open an account if it's an, an account with an IBAN number in like Germany or Italy, then you, you can use that also. Uh, registration in the municipality is the same as for the other students. And we are arranging that on the 11th of September, on a Saturday. Okay, great. Right. Thank you, uh, Mariana. Uh, I'm not sure who to ask this question, but now, some students have received one vaccine out of two. Uh, are they still obliged to be quarantined? And can they get their second dose in the Netherlands, uh, same dose if possible, or a different dose if that's so possible? Can that happen? Okay. Yeah, I can answer that question. We, we were aware that this question uh, would be coming. Um, in the Netherlands, you can get the vaccine of Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca and Janssen, or Johnson and Johnson is it's also called. So those are the four that are available in the Netherlands. So if you have one of those four, you are most likely can get the second one uh, in the Netherlands. If your first uh, vaccination was of, uh, uh, I don't know what the Chinese uh, vaccine is. Sinovac. Sinovac or one of the other vaccines. At the moment, they prefer not to do so. Then, so then you are urged to get second vaccination also in your own country. But the developments are going quite quickly in in that sense because I think two weeks ago it was it became known in the Netherlands that you can get a combination of first AstraZeneca and then Pfizer afterwards. So that might be possible, but I would advise you to try to get both vaccinations in your own country. And if it's not possible, then when, once you're in the Netherlands, um, you will uh, contact the, the health services and they will inform you uh, uh, what is best to do. About the, the quarantine, I think at the moment it's obligatory for everyone to first go in quarantine. Even, even for two? Even if you're fully vaccinated, I think so. But that's, I mean, that can also change. Uh, so I would suggest to check, uh, not now, but, but in a month time, uh, when there's more known about the policy, the, the, the Dutch uh, websites. Yeah. It's also for, because some countries are low risk countries, according to the Dutch website, uh, the RSM, and they, uh, they say that they don't have to be quarantined because that's what's written in the website. So yeah, so then what's written in the website, the official website, uh, that counts and, and it's changing the whole time. So it's difficult to, to do any predictions right now. It, it's the, the status of, of the Netherlands is changing, but also of, of other countries. So that's really to check on, on the website. Thank you, uh, Vika. Uh, um, no. Okay. It will not be a problem for students to arrive later than normal because of restrictions. Well, we urge all students to be there in time. So uh, we really would like them to, to start all in time to have the full uh, introduction period also in the Netherlands. But of course, we are aware that there might be restrictions to, due to traffic restrictions or the situation in your country or in our country. So if it's there's nothing to do about it, that's the way it is and we try to accommodate uh, your situation. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we're almost there. I'm looking at the questions and they're all same, differently written, but same uh, the gist. Okay, uh, this has came out twice. Um, Gondelstraat uh, housing. There's not much information on the website about this. Uh, is it is it open to book already? Uh, Gondelstraat. It's booked. It's 
it's fully booked already yeah because we have uh, the housing immediately around the corner which is Basarlan and um, Doris Doris uh, are managed through a, a housing company called Duo and the uh, Gondelstraat we, we say the Gondelstraat <laughs> we have a very strong it's a difficult <laughs> name to pronounce for non-Dutch people um, that is ran, uh, that is uh, owned by the ISS, so uh, their situation is slightly different, but there also the number of rooms available is limited, and as Marianne just said, it looks like they're all um, uh, well rent out uh, already, uh, but if you would be interested to get ISS housing, we would advise you to send a message to housing at iss.nl and to indicate that you would prefer to receive mediation for housing, and then we see what we can do and we've so far we've always found a solution so um we will see how to to uh, to help you yeah thank you uh Vika. Uh, one last question um, not something totally different uh, but this is for okelo uh now study visits uh, can you explain a little bit about that because uh, you were supposed to go in March, some February or March, but that didn't happen because of the restrictions. But now something is planned, all right? So can you explain a little bit about how it works, the study visits? Yeah, so basically, um, study vi visit, all the majors have, um, they, are, they have their own budget to, to plan and organize a study visit within one of the selected countries can also be within Netherlands here, but it, it, it has to be in line with what you're studying and also the, the visit should also be important, an important segment in your learning phase. You can visit international organization or you can visit um, any particular um, activity that's happening in a particular country, which is of interest of your course. Um, because of the pandemic and the situation that has been quite evolving, um, for our batch it has been quite hard to, to plan around it. Um, but uh, we have some majors who have been able to travel. Um, I know majors who have traveled around um, Netherlands here. Um, as for SJP, we pushed it to um, towards the end of uh, September. Um, early August when we uh, almost done with our first uh, presentation of RP. Um, but yeah, that's basically on the trip. Um, the old batch, SJP, they went to Greece. Um, the, the other um, went to Germany. And um, yeah, it's basically a trip for, for the different majors. And you go within that area uh, with your convener and other professors. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Robert. Last question. Uh, to Mariana. Is this about finance? Uh, students are asking uh, how much do they need to bring uh, when they come to, uh, because now it's going to be difficult to get money. Uh, it, it's impossible, basically. Yeah. If they can, and they need to buy, they need to pay. Uh, for example, if they buy food from Korea, how do they pay it? And how do they get the money? Well, I guess that's, that's really well. We've been doing last year too, uh, during the pandemic, to pay students cash because that's the easiest way of going around and going shopping. So um, that's the, the cash. Uh, um, from the money that you have transferred to the ISS, um, we will do uh, portions, 250 euros, so that you don't have too much money in your room. Um, and if that's not enough, you can let us know and we can pay you another uh, portion. And that who uh, send an email to admissions at ISS.nl? Or how do you find it? We will explain how it works. When we when we first arrive and we say hello, we, you, do you want to get this money? Not all students want it, some bring money, but um, it's handy 
but uh, don't bring huge amounts. That's just not safe. It's better if we um, arrange it like this. What is the huge amount in, in euros? Well, euro or... No, you have to bring some money to get yourself from the airport to here. And maybe when you arrive over the weekend and we, we see you on Monday, so you have to manage for a few days or so 100 or 200 euros if it's possible. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Mariana. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for participating in this webinar. There were many questions. I hope we've been able to answer all those questions. But I can also imagine that there was a lot of information for you to to digest and to think through. So, if you have any further questions, please let us know and send an email either to Darren. Uh, or to the admission office if it's more specific, uh, or contact one of the current students or one of the other prospective students via Facebook or the WhatsApp group. You can also contact them via Darren. Um, so I think uh, after I said goodbye, we should turn around the camera and have Darren there as well, so you know the face behind this photo oh, is just joining us. A nice way of saying goodbye. <laughs> So that was a clip of there. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed the webinar, and we are really looking forward to, to welcoming you in the Hague uh, in the end of August. So uh, goodbye and good luck with further preparations. Bye bye. <laughs>